Hey everyone, here's a quick video on how to set up image planes and video references in Maya. This is a short video format that I call Quick Tips, so if you have any questions, let me know down below in the comments and I can answer them in a future video. So with that, here we are in Maya, and what we can do is go to any of one of our orthographic views. I want to go to View, Image Plane, Import Image. And I want to go ahead and select the image that I want to bring in. I'll be using this uh, vehicle reference image of a Datsun 2040Z and go ahead and open that. And you can see that this will work for any image whatsoever. So now that I have that, you can see that it actually shows up in the top front and side view and even in the perspective view. So if you do or don't want that, you can simply hit control A, go to the attribute editor and change this with this selected change looking through camera. So that way it'll only show up in the side view if that's what you want. Next, I can go ahead and bring in the next image plane or the same image plane with the different view. And you can see that I can do this with any reference that I have. So I'll go ahead and grab the uh, front view here. And then now I can go ahead and actually start positioning this in uh, perspective as well. So one thing that you can do is if you select the side view here, uh, you want to make sure right off the bat is to set your scale. I have the scale dimensions of this Datsun vehicle, which you can see is pretty large compared to the image reference. So what I'm going to do is select this Im image plane here go to the channel box and just scale this up and you can see that I can just do that here and I can just toggle x-ray mode and I'm essentially just going to manually position this with the cube that's in my scene. So this is going to help make sure that everything is to scale right off the bat. So I can just go ahead and kind of roughly do that and you can see I can get pretty close here and I can do the same exact thing with this front view here. So I can go ahead and scale this up and put it in position like so. All right, so this is just about all you need to do for your orthographic views, and you can obviously do that for a top view if you have that. Um, and you just want to make sure that also things are completely aligned between your views. So that's why I want to make sure that everything is kind of within the bounding box of this cube here that I have for reference. Um, but you get the general idea. So you just want to make sure to also just make sure to test things uh, between all the orthographic views, right? So basically, if I go ahead and show kind of what I have so far, uh, here's kind of this that sun vehicle that I'm going to be working on uh, and covering in a, a future tutorial. And you can see that I have this, you know, pretty, pretty close to uh, what I have in the, the image reference. I actually have a version of this where you can see uh, in this reference group where everything's kind of properly aligned, uh, like so. So you can see the side views very well aligned, the front views very well aligned. And then I just use this for, uh, for my modeling. OK, so you can also throw these on uh, what's called the layer. So I turn off that layer and group these and call these just ref and I can go ahead and make a new layer and go ahead and and have that right and then this layer will be here and won't get in the way if I'm if I'm modeling. OK, so the uh, last thing is you can also just, of course, move these out of the way because you don't want these to be right here in the middle. So you can just manually move these uh, in the Z for for these views. And if this was in all views, you can simply just move that uh, like so. All right. So that's how you load in uh, images, image planes and have uh, quite a bit of control uh, over them. Uh, the next thing I'll quickly show is how to do videos. So uh, what you can do, so I'll go ahead and kind of just hide uh, everything here and I can start with my orthographic view here and same thing. I want to go to view image planes, import uh, image um, or you can do import movie. Now, the important thing to keep in mind when it comes to importing movies or video files inside of Maya is you have to have a dot MOV An MP4 won't work. So you can simply use encoder to convert that. Uh, the other thing that I like to do is convert them into image sequences, and I'll show you that. So, like I said, you head over to your orthographic view, go to View, Image Plane, Import Movie, and then we can go ahead and grab the source images and go to my animation. You can see .movs popping up, but not .mp4. So make sure to select .mov, and that will go ahead and load. 
and that loads it here into the side view and we have this uh, loaded in. So now you can go ahead and see, I can go ahead and scrub and there's my video file uh, working uh, as intended. All right. Now, of course, if you want, you know, same thing applies here. You can m move and adjust this and position this into uh, the proper scale. Um, the other thing that I want to do is also, you know, change this where uh, I can actually have this in the perspective view. So I'm going to go ahead and just delete this and show you how to just kind of have this in the perspective view. And this is what I use a lot, uh, especially when teaching animation, is to just have your reference available at all times. So I go to view and my perspective view, of course. So I go to view, image plane, import image this time. So this time I'm going to grab the image sequence. All right. I always recommend taking the video files and converting them to image sequences so you can, you know, move through the animation and you can kind of pull out the the most extremes of your animation. OK, so this is just kind of a helpful tip. So I would kind of grab him right as like the last foot is there as he's going to jump. And then here he is and jumps over. By the way, this reference is simply from uh, endlessreference.com. Uh, so you can see this here and they got a great YouTube channel. So definitely check them out if you're an animator or looking to do some character animation. And now I can go back in here, select just the first image here and go ahead and hit open. And then now you can see that this pops up. Now, here's the thing to keep in mind is that, you know, if I have a cube here um, and I kind of zoom out, you can see that this is kind of in my way now in the perspective view, no matter what I try to do. So what you need to do is select the image plane with your video, go into the attribute editor here or your channel box actually. And then you're just gonna give this a large value for depth. I typically just add a zero is normally good enough. And there you go. So now I can move around and see my, my models. And then what I can do is actually just keep this, since this is my per perspective view, I can go ahead and just take the size of this and scale this down and then offset this. So it's kind of uh, in the top left of my viewport. So this is just a nice thing that you can do as you're animating. Uh, you can make sure to always have this up. And of course, that last thing that I forgot to do was just to make sure that you have use image sequences enabled. So again, if you select the image and hit control A to get to your attribute editor, you have use image sequence and there you go. So now you can see that the image sequence pops up and the frames match exactly frame 41 here and frame 41 on my, on my time slider. Now, the last thing I wanted to cover is you can offset this if you'd want, where you can go here to frame offset and say, actually, I want my frame zero to be right where he kind of gets on frame here. So that's like a 20 frame offset. So what I can do is just simply type in 20 and there you go. So he can just kind of jump right into frame. And so sometimes if you have videos that are hundreds of frames and you want to get to the point, uh, that's how you would do that. All right. So that's how you you can go ahead and set up image planes, image references, video files and image sequences. So I hope you found this helpful and I try to keep this um, less than 10 minutes here. So again, if you found this helpful, be sure to like, comment, subscribe uh, to help the channel grow. And let me know if you have any other questions and I can cover in a quick video in the future. All right. Thanks and see you guys around.